Hey everyone, Tim with the Word of Life Church, where our pastor is the Reverend Junior Mount. On behalf of Pastor Mount, the congregation, and myself, I'd like to offer you, as always, an open invitation to come out and be with us for service. Amen. Hope everyone's doing well and saved and blessed of the Lord. Amen. If you're saved, <laughs> by default, amen, you are blessed of the Lord. Amen. Because you're on your way to heaven. Amen. And as the, uh, I like to say, as the uh, song goes, <laughs> the you're saved and uh, on your way to heaven and the journey getting sweeter every day can't remember the rest of the song but i i remember that part amen that's the, one of the good parts so uh but yeah hope everyone's doing well and uh faring well and uh you know getting toward the uh the grave next week is thanksgiving it's just unbelievable uh i'm telling you the lord is making the time he's i tell you what he is speeding time. no no people say oh no 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 can't be you know it's just because every, you know everything you know technology and everything just seems like it's speed. no god said he would shorten the time for the elect's sake i don't of course you know science oh time's a constant you know we're in this linear timeline time's a constant you can't doesn't speed up you know it's just our perception of time and everything and i thought i remember when i was younger Get this out here talking about this. When I was younger, it seemed like during the summer, it seemed like it, it la and I loved it because <laughs> I could stand school. Uh, it seemed like it lasted. I was talking about this to someone, maybe my family the night, father, brother, talking about it. seemed like it lasted. Summer lasted a long time. But even talking to the young people nowadays, and you know people use this as an argument saying see because they got technology and they get their heads stuck in their phones and it passes time passes by and everything well still I had at one certain point later on had video games yeah we're talking about like I can remember when the Pong the game Pong first came out and then later on got on Atari and then I thought well, oh, it was really and then, then later on much later on after that several years you know Nintendo come out and blah 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 you know and the rest is history now you get people that's addicted to video games. <laughs> they, they, even them. They, they, they got a condition for it now, they're calling it. Of course, they got a condition for everything now, right? Uh, but I tell you, time is it's just it's speed. You know, I, I could be wrong. I don't know. But it's just, uh, I think we're in... And I don't, I don't think a lot of people recognize that. I just I believe that we're in uh, some amazing times in history, uh, prophetically, uh, definitely. Because uh, you know, as a thing, I mentioned it in maybe last video or something, or in the mention it before. Uh, stacking up, especially over in the uh, with Israel and everything. Um, there's a, there's a war talks about in Ezekiel 38 I believe that's due to be fulfilled and it's gonna be it's a possibility that could be that could be coming soon and just other stuff going on that we're seeing and you know allow the Lord allowing us to see and uh, understand and uh, it's a uh, just amazing times uh, most of all most of all uh, we got to continue the work amen we <laughs> I know we you know we love seeing these things giving understanding and you know witnessing these things and everything like that but we always got to I, I guess uh, I, sometimes we get carried away <laughs> letting these other things and study here. Main thing is getting well, got to get grounded here. Uh, this is the, the main work, amen. Which is to uh, seek and save that which is lost. Uh, the the commission that we're put to, amen. Talking about feeling like we don't have a uh, have a work to do. Whoops, back in the table room. Uh, don't have a work to do uh, like a calling yeah we do if if, you, if, you're, if you're saved um, you 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 are called on to be a witness uh, to give a testimony amen uh, to be give a public 
testimony. Amen. If you're saved, uh, you're, you're supposed to you're supposed to give a uh, public, you know, testimony that that you're saved. That the Lord Jesus has saved you, and uh, you're on your way to heaven. Amen. And uh, you know, he said, if he said, if I be lifted up, he said, I will draw all men unto me. Amen. And uh, he certainly was. He lifted up on that cross. Amen. So it was the, the serpent in the wilderness was lifted up. Amen. And that Moses, you know, he made the serpent of brass and everything. And the, the serpents biting everybody. The poison of the venomous snakes, you know, were biting people. If they looked upon that, they were healed. Uh, it's, if ever a time that we need to push out the word of God to a lost and dying world it is right now especially the way that we are seeing time now <laughs> a lot of people will, will probably won't follow with me with that along with that but that's fine I mean, there's nothing I would fall out with anybody with you know people say well it's just because of this and it's because of this. Well, that's fine I ain't, you know, ain't gonna argue with anybody it's just uh but I just looked at the calendar, <laughs> looking at the weather for this coming week, and it was like, you know, it was like, looked at Thanksgiving. Good grief. <laughs> Before we know it, you know, the Christmas, the Christmas, and then, you know, first of the year. But that's when we start our uh, uh, climb back up toward toward spring, and the <laughs> time changing back again. So, you know, we'll try to get there. Uh, so we'll see what... Uh, 2021 brings amen uh like i said i think in the last video you know uh, a lot of people's <laughs> looking forward for 2020 to be in the rear view mirror and uh with all the things that went on with the the corona virus the covid china originated virus it was why you call it that well because it came from china so uh you know put on you know, I, but we don't get into the specifics of that. It, it doesn't matter, you know. I'm just glad that, uh, uh, you know, God's still a God that heals. And, uh, uh, you know, as we said, God, you know, Lord Jesus said these things were coming. And more things are going to come according to the Word of God. So, uh, you know, we just, we have to be prepared and we got to walk in faith knowing that, uh, God's going to see us through all these things. He's never failed us yet. Amen. Sure, we have problems. Sure, we have issues. Sure, we have things that go on in this world and we have to deal with them. I mean, but that's that's part of this this side of eternity that we have to uh, that we have to deal with. You know. So why doesn't God do this? Why doesn't God do that? Why you know why this? Why that? Well, you have to remember. It's the human race. It was, it, it, you know, it was our fault. Well, I didn't do it. I didn't do anything. <laughs> well, you know, we had uh, one commandment that we couldn't follow. Now, we, yeah, we we were tempted, and we felt we felt the test. Amen. Uh, and we continue. And continue to fail the test amen so that's why God had to send his son the the ultimate the sinless spotless lamb of God without sin amen no sin no guile found in his mouth amen and he died for all men and as we say it's not God's will that any should perish but that all should come to repentance amen and uh, that should be all of our prayers as well as Christians uh, don't want to see anyone go to that punishment that torture uh, because it's going to be eternity amen when you when you as I say it a lot it's true when, when you were born you were born into an eternal existence either eternal life or eternal death it's hard for me to now I can I can I can I can imagine I can't fathom really fathom really 
when I say eternal life, I can say, okay, well, live continuously and never ending. I can't really <laughs> grasp the whole idea of that because of the finite mind that I have. But when I think about eternal death and torture and punishment, I, I really can't grasp that. Because that's going to be total separation uh, from God, from the Lord Jesus, from everything that's good and holy and pure and any love. And I mean, it, it, I won't. <laughs> it goes without saying. Oh, I, I want nothing to do with that. You know, and these people make rash statements. I heard a lot of people say it's and 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 I forgot who it was and. Maybe there's been more than one, and, and this has been repeated. These preachers say, "Well, I'm not afraid to swing over hell on a grapevine." You know, <laughs> we make rash, foolish statements like that. You know, I mean, maybe uh, maybe you're trying to get a reaction out of your congregation uh, or something like that, or you know, maybe you just you know make, making a, a a statement out of you know your Bumping your chest, bravado, you know, or something like that. I, I don't know, but uh, I mean, if you're saved, you're on your way to heaven. But you know, you and you know, this, you know, we're we're yeah. I believe in eternal security as long as we remain in it. You know, we can walk away from God and reject Him and never come back and you know do certain things that can make us unredeemable. You know. Sorry, you eternal security believers, but there's things you can do to make you unredeemable, even after you, you know, commit yourself to the Lord and get saved. You know, if you take the mark of the beast, well, if you're saved, you won't take the mark of the beast. Uh, you get in the Word of God, study that out a little bit more. But anyway, we don't want any part of that. <laughs> so we want to stay in the protective hand of God. Amen. Don't walk away, because if you, because it, it said nothing can snatch you out of His hand. Uh, you notice it doesn't mention that you can't walk away. Someone had to fess up one day when I said that. It was the same person and persons that was calling me the the. Or was it the law pushing Pharisee? I think it was. I think it was that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's like no. It's like, yeah, you're yeah, you're secure in the hand of God, and the, yeah, you, you nothing can snatch you out of Him. But well, if you walk away and reject God, curse Him to His face, and and never, you know, return and, and never gain repentance and never, you know, and just turn your back on totally, you know. And it was it was a slow reply. Reply I was like, well, yeah, okay, in that case, yeah, I could understand. I was like, there you go. It wasn't like I was trying to win the argument. Like ah, I got you one up. I was like, but so you know, you know, so it was just it was like so. You know, when you're trying to talk to people, or when I'm trying to do it, it's like it's not trying to win an argument and get a one up. We shouldn't be like that. It's just trying, it's trying to, well, it's trying to educate. It's like, here is what it says in the Word. I'm trying to share because you know I don't want to be deceived I don't think anybody that would listen to this or anybody out there would want to be deceived amen that's the devil's job he's 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 the great deceiver amen if he can make you think one way and then in the end you've believed that way and then you die and you go your whole life believing a certain way and then you die and you fall off into the the pits of hell You know, if I'm believing the wrong way, a certain way, 
somebody come and tell me. <laughs> if, if I'm believing the word of God in the wrong way, somebody, you know, you know, Lord, if somebody send somebody through your spirit leading and guiding me in the right way, or send somebody by to tell me, let me know, and I'll change it. This is too important. This this is eternity we're talking about. As I say it, and, and, and I, one of those things that sticks with me, your one this, this one decision in this life is going to determine your eternity. The one decision you make for Christ or that you don't make at all or do anything. You can sit, just live your life and do whatever. Work your job and come home play on the weekends never set foot in the church never think about the Lord never think about any of that fine go to hell but I believe God in his infinite mercy and since he is merciful and long suffering the way will be made for all to hear the plan of salvation. Amen. For grace and mercy to be shown. Amen. And there will be, there will come a day for the, the Bible talks about the fullness of the Gentiles. That will happen. And it will be time. And we want as many as possible. Amen. Like I said, like I said before, it's not about winning arguments. It's not about, you know, hey, I got one up on you. It's like, you know, because, you know, hey, I, I know more of the word than you or no, 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 nothing. No, nothing. It's not, nothing like that. It's you want to lead a person in the right direction if, the, if you see them going in the wrong direction. Like I said, I would want that for, for me. Because like I said, it's much too important. I don't want to miss eternity. It's too much, too much to look forward to. I, and I've I've went too far to turn back now. I, I, if I, I most and a lot of times I say it mind the pulpit or on, and I probably said on here, if you went if you got saved and you, and you went one day Walking with the Lord and your salvation, you've went too far to turn back. Amen. And I hope you, people listen, somebody, whoever, listen to this. Whatever point, this is recording this, I don't do live, although it may come to the point, may have to, the way censorship is going, we have to get a website and do recordings on there and put it on there or do <laughs> do a live podcast. I don't know about live. You can't uh, you can't edit and stop and pause and do all that stuff, <laughs> especially when you have cats jumping up and you know flying through the air and doing ninja moves and jumping in your lap and on the computer, <laughs> which happens sometimes. Uh, but <laughs> at any rate, uh, we'll have to see what happens. But uh, you know. Um, we just don't know, you know. We don't know from day to day what's, you know. But God's still in control. No matter what happens, no matter what occurs, I know God is still on the throne. He's never going to be dethroned. So let that peace fall upon your heart. Know that God's on the throne. The Lord Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession and prayer for you and I. We ask in faith, believing what we have need of, even the desires of our heart, he said, that he would give us. If we only believe. To ask anything in my name, he said, I, that he would do that, that, that your joy would be full, that your joy might be full. Thank the Lord. We serve a true 
and a living God that loves us and wants the best for us. Amen. Amen. Oh, got pop-ups coming up here. <laughs> Advertisements. <laughs> uh, turn with me today while we're closing these pop-ups. Need to remove some programs here that I'm not using. <laughs> pop-ups. Turn with me to the book of Romans, chapter 1. After seven, and it is dark outside. Oh, can't wait for spring, for spring to come and the the time change to happen again, to where it's going to be still light outside. I'm not complaining. I really am not. I'm just I like the spring and the I like the other time part. I like I don't like when it gets dark early. Although. Praise the Lord. Okay. Romans chapter 1 and uh, let's uh, I think it kind of felt led to kind of lie down on, on verse 16 to kind of start off. That's the way I felt led. Very familiar scripture. We've heard it but we're going to see where the Lord kind of leads us in the direction today with this. One in, Romans one sixteen says for and this is the way we should be, all of us. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Amen. Should be willing to reveal it, speak it, uh, before this dark, evil, fallen, worldly system, <laughs> as I like to call it. Uh, that's kind of my indictment of the of this this place that we live in, not my house. <laughs> I'm talking about the system that we live in. This is the not the creation we live in. The creation we live in is still beautiful that God made, even though it's not the original. This one we live in now is scarred. You look at it. You know, look at the Grand Canyon. Look at some of the other stuff that's around. It's uh, yet yeah, still beautiful. That river did not make that, that runs through the Grand Canyon, did not make that Grand Canyon. Oh, over millions and millions of years. It, but no, 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 no. They, they forgot the flood. They didn't They didn't include the flood in their little thing. No, the, the world is scarred because of the flood that came to took care, uh, that, that took care of all the, whew, wow, of all the sin and uh, uh, the, the all the stuff that, that, that would take a long time to go into a lot of all the stuff that was going on wasn't just the sin of you know all people say oh because it was just it was the, the sin of homosexuality well that's just a, a modern made up word homosexuality really, it's usually it's usually the biblical word of sodomy okay wasn't just because of that there was all kinds of stuff going on back before but okay no, the world we know not now is scarred. Still beautiful. Still, you know, when it's sunny, blue, blue skies outside. Now I know we we we're supposed to, we rejoice every day the Lord gives us. Amen. I still like the blue skies and you know sunny weather. Uh, but it's the worldly system we live in. That's what the enemy controls. Amen. The God of this lower G God, the God of this world, Prince of the Power of the Air. That's why God equips us, amen? He equips us to deal with these things, amen? We've got to show our authority, amen? We, 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 don't, we, we don't have to be afraid to stand up and be counted, amen? Say, brother, they're, they're attacking people like that. They, they stand up and they're, they're like that. The disciples, the apostles of old, they stood up. They weren't afraid. Well, they were martyred. Or martyred can't, I can't talk. <laughs> were martyred for the faith. A lot of people nowadays are getting martyred for the faith in other countries. I said, brother, that can't happen here. Reason I reason I keep looking down, there's a cat that really won't up my lap. Uh, people getting uh, attacked right now. Well, the, right now it's anytime anything even close to supporting. The stuff in a political sense people are getting attacked right now and all that stuff 
but especially if you rise up as a conservative Christian in support of certain political stuff, you're in danger of getting attacked. But still, you're going to stand. It's not just you're standing for a man. You're standing up for what you want in a godly nation. And as we talked about in the last video, I want to see a godly nation where the unborn are allowed to be born. Amen? Allowed to live. I want to see that stop. Amen? Is it going to happen? Doubtful. I want to see the marriage laws stopped and I want to see it declared that marriage biblically is restored where it's between a man and a woman. Are we going to see that? Probably not. Oh. Hang on just one second. I think I'd learned my lesson after a while to, <laughs> to lock one of the neediest cats that we have outside before I start a video. <laughs> That's, but that's that's what I want to see. That's the the nation that I would like to see, and and other things go along with it. But you don't see that thought for very much. It's not popular. Why? Because you get you get votes taken away. You get support taken away politically. If you stand for that, if you stand for, if you stood for those two things, you forget it. I know on one side you 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 you, you might as well forget it, but even the other side that supposedly stands for God bless America and da 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 da. I'm not bringing this. I'm not trying to pull it over in the political side. I'm just stating a fact. Now you have some of them saying, "Yeah, yeah they 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 support uh, the right to life." Well, that's a step in the right direction. But saying they support it and then getting in and actually trying to change it—that's another thing. But still, the other thing about the marriage, they will not touch it. They will not touch it. Because why? Because they don't see anything wrong with it. Whereas all these spiritual advisors that's supposed to be advising our leaders, apparently they don't see anything wrong with it either. Or if they're telling them that, probably saying, well, we can't really do that because we're gonna, we'll lose a lot of our base. We do that because we have a lot of conservatives that are they don't believe that way. That's a shame. That's what we come to. Now, am I saying I hate these people that do that? No. No. No, no, no. I hate the act. I hate the sin. Just like God hates the sin. God hates the killing of the unborn. God hates abortion. And as I said once again, let's, let's throw in this little disclaimer here, okay? If you've had an abortion, for whatever reason, at one point, when you ask for forgiveness, God's forgiven you, and you move on. And nobody should hold it over your head. Folks, we're, we got to we either got to get serious with God, or we might as well just just let just let things go as they're going. As a nation, as a church, as individuals, if we're not going to be serious. What's he say about it in the Book of Revelation?
said, I would you, you were hot or you were cold. He said, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out my mouth. Think about that. He said, I would rather you be hot. Or, yeah, he said, I would rather you be cold and numb and not even saying or, doing, or having anything to do with me. Not even speaking anything about me was what that boils down to. Than to be lukewarm. And what that boils down to is to be hypocritical. Because that brings a blight upon the house of God, the church. I'm not talking about a building. I'm talking about us, the church, you, the church, upon the Lord. Because once again, how many people you talk to? Like, yeah, yeah, I used to. Yeah, yeah, I used to, you know, be a Christian. I used to you know, I would, uh, go to church regular and everything like that. But I started seeing, every, you know, everybody saying one thing and doing another, and I got sick of it. And I just decided, I, I just, I just left because nobody, you know, they'd live live one way on Sunday, and then Monday through Saturday they they'd be a different person. Then Sunday they'd come in and be all holy and righteous, and that's the problem. So, at that point, God's talking about it would make him sick to where he just spews you out of his mouth. Church, we either get on fire for God, be hot, or not even do anything at all. It begins right here, right there. Examine ourselves. I gotta examine myself, you gotta examine you. Let's not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ and speak up. Oh, what you're gonna talk about, what you're gonna say, what you're gonna declare, just what we talked about. <laughs> not gonna be popular. Never been it's never been popular. You still got to speak it. You're going to be looked down on. You're going to be yelled at. You're going to be possibly even attacked. But preachers in the past, that's, well, who was it? Who was it? The fam famous preacher? Oh, maybe. Was it Sp Spurgeon, maybe? I can't remember. One of them that was preaching in the crowd. Somebody picked up a rock, threw it. Hit him in the head, knocked him down. I, I don't. I don't think it knocked him out because he just slowly got back up again, and started started preaching again. Let's go back further. Bible, Paul, stoned. He got back up and went right back to the to the to the mission that he was on. Amen. We got to be willing to hazard our life as well. Are we any better than they are, or were <laughs> rather? How are we, as American Christians? Now, don't get me wrong. I love this country, this nation, our freedoms that we have. I love being an American, but how are we as American Christians, I guess I shouldn't have said American that way because people will think that I'm slotting America and, I, and, and oh, you hate this country. No, I don't. I love our country, but how are we as American Christians any better than any Christians elsewhere in the world, especially the ones that's going through true persecution, true tribulation that's hazarding their lives truly hazarding their life I mean in danger of death or jail uh, uh, jail time long jail time still they're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ they are willing to do these things are we 
it's a good time to ask ourselves. We're going, getting toward a new year in 2021. Instead of making a New Year's resolution, maybe we need to ask ourselves, this coming year, are we going to be ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Or are we as a church going to finally rise up and be hot, not lukewarm, not cold, and be on fire for God? And this year, really going to make an impact on this nation, this world. Because it says, For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, meaning to the, the Gentiles, all that, to us. Now see, we may, we're now a Jew in the spiritual, in the heart, a circumcision of the heart. It says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Are you living by faith? Are you walking by faith? Are you praying by faith? As we should be. This is a faith walk. It is a prayer walk. It is a, <laughs> a life of faith. You go out your front door, get in your car, you have faith that you're going to make it to your destination that you're going to. But you really don't know if you're going to. You really don't know if you're going to make it. You have faith that you're going to. When you lay your head on your pillow at night, you close your eyes thinking, yep, I'm, that alarm clock's going to wake me up in the morning. But you don't really know if you're going to wake up on this side of eternity. You don't know in the middle of the night something's going to happen and you're going to open your eyes on the other side of eternity wherever you're prepared to go you gotta remember don't say that don't take this as a scare tactic because it is not a scare tactic and once again the truth of our existence once again the just shall live by faith the Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made by our Creator. Amen. By God. Amen. He created us. He's our Creator. Amen. In our neck root, in our head areas, there's small blood vessels. If just one of those tiny little blood vessels just happens to burst, they're tiny. It just happens to burst. You will depart this life in minutes. The just shall live by faith. Here's the thing. When God's ready for you, He will send for you. <laughs> but if you <laughs> until he's ready for you you are here you are right here if you're still here then he's got you here for a reason me and a friend of mine my goodness we we are dear during our younger years good grief we went through a lot A lot of things that should, we should we should have ended up we should have been out of here. Went through a wreck, was thrown from a vehicle out of a back window that was a hatchback. That to this day we still don't know. Three of us in a back seat were thrown out of a back window, a hatchback that I don't understand how the three of us got thrown out of there. It was by the hand of God. That he, he must have sent an angel or he must have reached down and pulled us out of that it was in a wreck spun around hit a bank 
three of us were thrown out and laid by his hand or by the angel's hand laid down on that bank where we were thrown out car flipped back up on the road the two two people in the front were still in the front none of us had any serious injuries worst injury was my friend and he had a bruised hip <laughs> come to find out it's where I apparently had landed on him and bounced off him <laughs> kind of funny I know but see you don't know what's going to happen but we should have been out of here you know how many people get thrown from vehicles just about a month ago down the road a young lady was in a wreck she was thrown from a vehicle in a situation pretty similar she didn't make it she was on the side of the road people were going by saying they had a sheet had her covered up now tell me God doesn't work in mysterious ways the just shall live by faith so why didn't she make it and why did you all make it you're asking the wrong person but God still has it had a reason for us to be around to this day but he was ready to take her and other people and the other stupid things you do as a kid that hazard your life you don't realize it until you get older and you look back that's why when you older people you younger people anybody younger watching this or something like that or <laughs> seeing it I don't know anybody younger would but <laughs> younger watches listen to some older people when they're trying to tell you something and explaining something to you saying don't do this because they're speaking from experience experience is a good teacher they're not trying to kill your fun or being a bus kill or whatever you want to call it I don't know if it's a, even a word to use anymore they're talking by experience again God gave us common sense amen we're to use it and we're not to tempt God we know the trains coming we get off the tracks there's a rattlesnake in front of you you know not to stomp it but you're gonna get <laughs> going to get bit I think you know I got a million and I go on and on but the just shall live by faith it happens to those who don't it happens to the ones in the end here in the fallen worldly system we're talking about well this verse 18 it says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Listen to this. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness. They know the truth. They know the word of God. They're holding it in unrighteousness and using it for unrighteousness and reasons of their own devices in their own making I think it's safe to say according to this verse God does not like that probably one of the first things when we talk about that and saying that you're going to say first thing that comes to mind oh my goodness these preachers at these mega churches and on TV they're sending out these little prayer bottles. If you send me $25, I'll send you this this prayer bottle that I or this prayer call I've personally prayed over. 
<laughs> well, could be. But they're holding the truth. They know that they know the truth, but they're going to twist the truth. And they're even mixed up in the middle of an ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. God knows my heart. Oh, yes, He does. And that's and that I say that and that should scare the living daylights out of everyone. God knows He knows the depths of your heart, probably in parts that you don't even know. People gloss over that verse, but they gloss over that part right there. See, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. They know the truth. Hold them back on it, though. Why would they do that? Control. Control. And love control and have <laughs> it's a complex and love power greed love of money root of all evil but you saw the first part though it said the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all of that there's nothing nothing that's going to be hidden it's all going to be shouted from the rooftops it's all going to be revealed all in godliness all in righteousness and we will all give an account well, you will everyone almost appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We all will. We're going to stand there. A lot of people say we're standing there naked. I don't know. Wife asked me that the other day. said, is that actually in there? And stand there when we're standing there naked, actually. And I said, you know, I don't think, I don't believe it is. Correct me if I'm wrong, but, but we are going to stand there. I think where they get the part there is we're going to stand there open and nothing shall be hid from him because <laughs> he knows everything everything has been recorded and going to be shown everything that we've said thought everything in the heart nothing going to be hid I'm not going to stand for anybody i got enough that i got to give an account for it's why the salvation of the Lord, the blood of Christ on my life and on my heart and yours, is <laughs> it's the, it's so important. If not for that. Whew, we didn't have that. That's why I talked about at the very beginning about the salvation, the one choice greatest choice the greatest thing the greatest decision that you'll make in this life and that's why you know the word talks about or, or where people well why we why wait why why were we create why did God create us? well to to give him glory to give the Lord worship to walk with him to to, to be to, to, to give him the glory for him to, to reveal himself to us, to, to, you know, to, for companionship, to, to, for many things, I believe. But make no mistake, 
God is God. He's in charge. I, I've, I've been saying it here lately. You know, I, I've kind of gotten to the point where it's pe where people have been saying that. Well, you know, and shaking their fist at God and saying, you know, saying, well, if if, if God was real, why not do this and not blah 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 blah, you know, and all this stuff. That, you know, it doesn't you know about the create about the world and everything and how the creation teaches that there is a creator. God is God. He's still on the throne. He's on the throne. He made this. He made us. Doesn't matter what anyone says. Doesn't matter how God does things. It didn't matter how he did it in the Old Testament, which a lot of people, well, God, the way he did things, how he killed people, how he killed all these nations and everything like that. And there are reasons behind all that stuff if you get in there and you study. But see, I'm not, I don't make an excuse for God because I don't have to make an excuse for God. God is God. He's in charge. He made all this. <laughs> he number one. Amen. Now all power is given to Christ. Amen. The Lord Jesus. You know. But you know. God. He started all this. He spoke all this into existence. Like I said. I don't have to make an excuse for him. All I have to say is. It doesn't matter what you believe. What you say. Or what you place. On to charge or give you know a charge on God or an indictment an an indictment if I can speak on God doesn't matter God's still God he's still in charge he made all this he made you he made me whatever he does is right and is righteous amen I don't dance around the issue anymore I would say, well, you know, because of this and because of God and, and he, this and everything and, and, and pad and pad it and everything, you know, not do it anymore. I don't do it anymore. Because I serve a true and a living God that is, whew, mm, glory, that is God Almighty on the throne and I I don't have to make excuses for him. I, I and I refuse to make excuses for him. And we need to thank him daily for the day that he's given you and me to live another day. But most of all, we thank him for sending his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who was God in the flesh, part of the Trinity. Amen. Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, which was the most excellent sacrifice, more excellent sacrifice, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God, the Son of God, sent to die for us, take our place when we were without any hope in this world. Amen. Send him to die on that cross to take our place. That we might make heaven our home. So Jesus died on that cross. was put in that moral tomb. And he rose on that third and appointed day. Victorious over death, hell, sin, and the grave. And it's when he said on that cross, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost. It was finished payment in full. Amen. So you see anybody laying anything to the charge of God and an indictment against God anymore? Don't make excuses for God because you don't need to. Tell them, God is God. And what he does is righteous. Doesn't matter what you believe, what you think, what you say. <laughs> and they might want to, you know, not test God's
patience. I know God's long-suffering. It's not his will any should perish, but not any, that all should come to repentance. But, you know, it might be good to have a nice, healthy fear of, of God. But thank the Lord that he sent. You know, thank him that he sent the Lord Jesus that we might have life and have it more abundantly. That we can make heaven our home if we only accept the sacrifice that the Lord Jesus did for us. Amen. That we can repent of our sins. That we come to him humbly. If he draws us. See, if the, if the Spirit draws us, there's no salvation. The Spirit has to draw you to that altar of repentance. You have to repent humbly before the Lord. Repent of your sins. Ask the Lord to save you. To come into your heart. To take up a boat there. And that you'll serve him the remainder of your days. And he will. He will forgive you. He will save you. Make a public declaration. Tell people that you saved. That the Lord Jesus came into your heart. And that he saved you. Now you. You know. You walk in newness of life. You're a new creature. You're a new creation. Amen. Old things are passed away. Behold all things become new. Amen. Now you can call God is your Father in heaven. Amen. You're joint heirs to the throne of God, you know, with, with Christ. Amen. Talk about a position. Amen. You're blessed. We should start saying it more that we're blessed because we are. And the just shall live by faith. faith in what God's going to do what he's done what he's doing in faith that he is going to do everything that he said in his word every thing is going to be fulfilled according to what his word declares and what is said nothing will be left unfulfilled everything will come to pass according to what his word says and if you're saved, you walk into the, and you, the reindeer of your days, you you will make heaven your home. It is guaranteed. You are in his hand. Nothing can snatch you out. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's where I'm going to end right there. Thank the Lord <laughs> for the Spirit of God for that. We thank the Lord for the word that he's brought forth and uh, for all that he's doing. Uh, you know, and it's just, uh, you know, just don't look back this year and, you know, just be in distress. You know, let the let the peace of God just fall over you on top of the sole of your feet, you know, and and be you know think in that manner oh you know 2020 get it in the rear view mirror oh wait to 2021 because we don't know what's going to happen look for your peace and your comfort in the Lord because you're not going to find it down here in anything I'm just telling you that right now everybody should know that but if you're walking with the Lord and you know you, if you're a Christian already you, you know that you're not going to find any peace and comfort down here in anything you find it in the Lord. He said he'll keep you in perfect peace. He said he'll give you peace that passeth all understanding. Amen. Amen. Once again, I don't think I did this earlier. I may have. Uh, <laughs> remember the websites that I uh, give, and I'll put them in the description box. Uh, run to rescue.com. It's R U N, the number two, rescue, all one word. Uh, run to rescue.com is Christian nonprofit organization helping victims of uh, sex trafficking and uh, it probably it, if you tell them other things too it probably go deeper and they'll probably connect you maybe with other people as well with like a SRA type situations which is a satanic ritual abuse uh, it happens people it happens I don't care how people uh, put it down and deny it uh, it happens multiple testimony and uh, 
there's people that don't want that to come out. Even churches that don't want that talked about. It's sad. Department of Justice website, National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, 1-800-843-5678. Uh, oh, I didn't give the number for the run to rescue. Uh, one or yeah, one eight 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 two two four six zero six two. So the suicide prevention, uh, national suicide prevention lifeline one eight hundred two seven three eight two five five. I'm all <laughs> discombobulated. Like <laughs> like that word. It's fun. Uh, I will, like I said, I'm gonna link those or put those just in the description box in the video and uh, you can check those out and I encourage you to do so because you never know somebody you might run into might need one of those uh, or you might uh, know someone that might be in need of something like that or you might need something like that I don't know but we like to put stuff out there to be of help and felt led to put these particular ones and who knows something else may pop up that Phil led to put out there and be of help um, that's part of being you know part of what we do amen so anyway uh, pray for one another lift one another up in prayer exhort one another and pray for the country the nation and just uh, pray for the uh, the will of God to be done you know for wh whoever whatever happens you know god's will it's still going to be done so you know just accept that and uh trust in god's will because you know that's like i said he's 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 the ultimate authority what's going to happen and like i said you know we've got something much better to do we're not seeking it we're not seeking a kingdom down here in life down here you know we, we we're seeking the kingdom to come amen that heavenly kingdom, amen, the Lord's prepared for us, amen, amen, praise the Lord, all right, God bless y'all, blessings in Christ Jesus on each and every one of you out there, amen, guys, take care, and uh, we will see you in the next video, bye now.